How is it going, everybody? Today is an exciting, in, in fact, it has been an exciting three months, let me tell you, between the announce of 3000 and now the release and lack of anybody getting any cards of RTX 3000. And here we are now with the Samsung 980 Pro. In fact, you're gonna be watching this video two days before the release of the 3090 and what is essentially, what, a week away from Ryzen 4000 CPU. And now we have Samsung's latest and greatest PCIe Gen 4, their first PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive right here in my hands. Now, this is going to be a preview. This is not going to be a review. There's a lot of work that we need to do to actually officially review this. There's just not enough information that I have from Samsung yet to be able to do a really thorough investigation. So we have some questions out, and when we do a full review, we'll actually have a lot of those answers to those questions. I wanna start from the beginning and just kind of explain a little bit about why this is exciting, what's cool about it, uh, temper a little bit of what we're probably looking at from a marketing standpoint, Point. And then um, what, is it, what does it realistically mean from you? Again, this is their 980 Pro line of uh, NVMEs. Now, when I talk about Pro, I wanna kind of break it down. And the way to do that is I, I, gotta take a, I gotta take a step back and kind of explain to you guys NAND technology, specifically when it comes to NVMEs. Now there's four kind of tiers of NAND technology. There's called SLC, MLC, TLC and QLC. Now the most expensive and the most reliable is SLC and that's a single, uh, single write cell essentially. And what that means is that on a single cell, on an NVMe drive, it can have two states, either zero or one. Then there's the second one, which is MLC. And MLC is what typically has been the 980 Samsung Pro. And that can have up to four states, anywhere from zero to three. This has been Pro, it still has a very long, uh, high write longevity and is very, very stable, but has a tendency to be more expensive, and that's Pro. Then finally, there is TLC, which is more in line with the Evo, and you've seen things like Crucial, and all those other guys have a tendency to use TLC. It's less expensive, it actually can do up to seven, so zero, so it can have up to seven tiers, and you're gonna start to see, this is where things start to get confusing, but the point is, the higher the number, the more things you can store in a cell, which means the accuracy can go down as the drive gets used. And then finally, you have QLC, which is the QVO line of Samsung drives, which can do 14, but that means that there's a lot of room for error, especially as things get written a lot. Now, one of the things that's different about this 980 Pro versus the 970 Pro is that for the first time, it is not actually an MLC drive, it is a TLC drive. So it actually is more in line with what has been 970 Evo versus the 970 Pro. Now, what does this mean at a bare level? It just means that you have up to six bajillion terabytes that you can write, and really it's not a whole lot for you, but it is a change that is worth mentioning specifically. Does that mean, does that mean that this is worse? No, that means that they're giving 7,000 megs per second and then when the 7,000 megabits per second and when they're doing stuff like this, that means they may have had to make some technology changes to get that kind of rewrite speed. Now, are you going to get 7,000 megabits per second? That is the big question. And the thing is, is because of that much, what is essentially 6.5 gigs per sec, gigabits per second of bandwidth, you have to have a very beefy CPU to be able to get that kind of speed. And for games, etc., this is not something you're going to be able to take advantage of right now. In fact, this will be things that with Tiger Lake uh, uh, Intel CPUs or 4000 series Ryzen CPUs are really gonna start to get to take advantage of these absolutely incredible leaps in terms of technology. Just like we've seen with Nvidia and the 3090, uh, the same thing we're gonna see with things like the Samsung uh, 980 Pro and PCIe Gen 4. Wow, I've just used a lot of really complicated terms and I really hope that I'm helping you guys understand this. But point being, this is exciting, but a little ahead of its time. And what we're talking about when we get to this is that when we have that NVIDIA technology that's gonna allow you to do things like write at PCIe Gen 4s directly to the bus of the GPU, you're going to have very, very fast load times, be able to do a lot of data and have the GPU process a lot of stuff to make very pretty graphics, blow out your eyes, make your head explode, and just enjoy life at its fullest. Yeah, that's what just happened. Okay, <sighs> centering myself again. So what are we gonna look at today? Well, what I wanna kinda of do is temper a little bit of in terms of expectations. We actually have run this benchmark on two different benches. What we have right here is we have a B550 Aorus Pro, which is, before you get into it, because I know somebody's gonna be like, Roby, I have a little thing I wanna say. Remember, B550 only has PCIe Gen 4 on a single M.2 slot. That's right, and guess where I stuck the 980 Pro? On that single M.2 slot, so chill. Johnny, I'm just kidding, I don't know if Johnny is really the person who does that. But the point is, I do know that. So the 980 Pro is going to be sitting on the only single PCIe Gen 4 directly connected to the CPU, which is to maximize bandwidth between the CPU and the M.2. The other thing too is the reason I didn't want to do X570 
which I could have is I know that it still goes to the X570 chipset. So regardless, I still stick it in the best place to maximize bandwidth. For our CPUs, we're using the Ryzen 3950X. And I wanna be super clear, we're gonna show you the benchmarks between the 3950X and we also did this on a 3700X. And guess what? The 3950X still couldn't get 7,000. In fact, if I had a bunch of Threadrippers laying around, Okay, I have some, but I don't have, a, I don't have a motherboard. And so the thing is for us to be able to do that, we didn't have the opportunity to do that. It's you're going to need a very, very beefy CPU to be able to take advantage of this. So when I'm doing a 3950X, which is pretty much the most beefy, like multi-core, really kind of multi-threaded application for this, you are not getting 7,000 megabits per second. Now that's not to say that maybe you're not, I'm not capable of doing it, but we weren't able to test above that. And that's another reason that this is not a review. So we're gonna show that off. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you heat temperatures because that's the other thing too, is like maybe some of this has to do with thermal throttling. I will tell you that we did some testing. We weren't seeing like, we weren't seeing Right speeds go down. We're gonna be using Crystal Disk Mark. I'll talk a little bit about that. Point being is that we want to show you what the thermal, we wanted to do the test with um, out heat sinks on, because again, most PCIe Gen 4, when they first came out, like when you're talking about like the M, the uh, the ones from Corsair or even the RS ones, they did come with heat sinks. Then fi uh, Seagate came out with their 520s, which are like pretty much the fastest, 5,000 megabytes per second until we got the 980 and they, they didn't require heat sinks. So we're gonna do one test without heat sinks and then we're gonna throw heat sinks on it and we're gonna see if we actually get a difference in terms of overall performance. I'm guessing no, but we'll test it just in case. Oh, we also, we get to show off some cool tech, which is always a lot of fun. We're gonna be playing around with some FLIR because FLIR is awesome. And you know, if there's any excuse that I can do stuff to show pretty cool, neat little things. So we've got our FLIR camera right here that we're gonna be showing off and showing you temperatures. And we're gonna be comparing um, the PCIe Gen 4 temperature against a Western Digital SN550 uh, one terabyte NVMe drive, just to show you the differences um, between those two, just to give you an idea of how hot these things are going. In terms of other things that are on this, uh, whether you care, we're running 32 megs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, 32 megs of RAM, that'd be, ter that'd be terrible. 32 gigs of RAM, uh, 2060 KO, none of that stuff is really all that important for what we're doing, which is just uh, benchmarking the hard drive. So let's get into the testing and show you right now. So right here, uh, the first test that I'm gonna show you, just because we are doing this. And so the first test that we've actually done, this is a 3700X. Uh, as you can see, we're getting about 6,600 RAID uh, megabits per second. I wanna talk to you a little bit about Crystal Dent, Crystal Benchmark, and help you understand a little bit about what these different tests are. Because I think the thing that's really important is letting you understand what does Crystal Disk do and what is it that I care about when I look at this data? The, the, the thing is, is that the first thing is, is that it does what's called sequential read testing and then it does what's called random read testing. Now sequential just means that it reads data right in a row, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is really easy and usually the fastest operation. The second random means that it accesses data randomly. So it goes zero, three, six, nine, 12, 15. I'm gonna dance. I'm just kidding. I'm not really gonna dance. It's just, I, I was doing it in a rhythm and ever since I've been so big on TikTok. Okay, I have one video, I was pretty proud of it. But point being, random is just like what I just did. It was random. It just reads all over the place, which means things are gonna be a bit slower. Every time when you look at these things, it says sequential, that's because the fastest is 7,000 and that's the number that you'll see at the very top. Finally, there's this thing called Q-depth and then there's a thing called threads. And Q-depth is basically how many requests a drive has at one time, and then threads is how many processes that a drive has at one time. The standard test for, um, for Crystal Disk Mark is eight and thread one, which means one process has eight requests, and then it has one request in one thread, which is usually, that's where you see like the highest end, but that's, there's only so much you can basically do. And then you have what's called 4K, where it's doing random. So it's doing random read write, which is slower. Plus it's got 32 requests and 16 different requests, 16 different processes requesting things. And then finally you've got one process requesting 32 different things. And that's like kind of the worst of the worst. The, bot, the numbers that you care the most about are the first and the third, which is like your 4K random, and then your sequential, basically eight thread. So those are the ones that everybody kind of pays attention to. The other ones in terms of uh, are A, they're not realistic tests and you're seeing bottlenecking for different reasons. Looking at the first test, you're looking at this, this is the 3700X. And then I wanna show you next right here. So we're gonna show them side by side, the difference between the 3700X and the 3950X. Again, you're seeing actually a bump between the two. And these things are specifically because again, your CPUs are going to require a ton of bandwidth to be able to test and fully utilize this in the first place. These are incredible, I mean, incredible numbers when you're looking at this. Like Brian and I were literally like, holy crap, 
to in terms of what you're seeing from a difference between the um, the, re the the read speed and the write speed on these particular drives. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm going to go here real quick. This is this one right here that we're going to run. Um, that we're gonna run a test on real quick. This is PCIe Gen 3. So this is, again, Western Digital. It's a TLC drive. It's also doing the same exact test, but this is PCIe Gen 3. And just to give you an idea, literally, literally less than half that we're talking about when we're coming from a read and write perspective. That is nuts. Now understand that thing is also $100 versus the unbelievably high cost that we're talking about from the 980 Pro, which I don't know offhand, but we're gonna show it right here, hopefully. If I don't, I still don't know the cost and we'll show that at a later point. Hey, what's up guys, Roby Tech here. A uh, quick edit to the video because uh, after the video, we actually ended up getting the price and I was incredibly surprised at how inexpensive this thing actually was. In fact, the one terabyte model came in at $229. The 500 gig was $149.99 and the 250 gig was $89.99. So just to give you a reference, the uh, one terabyte Firecuda 520, which is the 5,000 megabit per second uh, NVMe drive from Seagate is 234. So this is actually coming in cheaper than even uh, the comparable other PCIe Gen 4. So wanted to add that in there, was incredibly surprised and uh, just wanted to set that Given that value, that makes this even more of a crazy deal. So there you go, nice little edit for you. Point being is, is that when you're talking about the difference in terms of what this is capable of, it's very, very cool. Last thing, as we run through this, the last thing we're gonna do is we just wanna kinda of show you the temperatures. We're gonna test, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test with the heat sinks on, and then we're gonna do a test with the heat sinks off. But before we do that, let us show you um, some FLIR because this is fun. Let's show you some flare real quick, PCIe Gen 3 and the PCIe Gen 4 um, at full um, under load with their heat. We had our fun. We played around with FLIR, which was awesome. We know that now know that Brian's internal temperature is about 30 degrees, uh, especially when he's he's a little he's a little flustered for the day. But that's okay. It's okay. We got him like a, a McDonald's shake, and he's he's happy again with his uh, strawberry milkshake. Closing it out. Here's where we're at. Is this incredibly fast? Mind blowingly so, right? Like when we took a look at the difference between what we saw from PCIe Gen 3 and even the results that we sat we had when we tested the Fire Cuda at 5,000, we're looking at a very easily 6,700 on a 3950X, which is which is incredibly crazy. We are also seeing that we are getting no difference between when we use the onboard CPU heat sinks and even just letting it air cool in terms of the speeds that we're getting when we're stress testing. Um, and you can look at these results here, like we basically ran two different tests um, and in both cases, uh, we were seeing anywhere between 6,800 and 6,700 um, in terms of their speed. That, I mean, like I said, within margin of error, completely fine. I think, I think what we've got here is an incredibly cool and incredibly awesome piece of tech. What would something like this really be useful for? There are, there are individuals who are going to be very excited about using something like this, and that's cool for them to get through this. Practically, what are we talking about? Well, if you're into like, cloud applications or AI development, anything that requires a ton of crunching numbers and storing and, and really fast storage, then those are the, gonna be the things that this is going to change a difference. Should you spend money, the kind of money that you're gonna do to have the absolute fastest and all that sort of stuff later on? Yeah, you could. If you want a future ready, your machine for things like when RTX IO, et cetera, come out. This is the beginning, this is bleeding edge. For like a lot of things where we see new technology around PCIe Gen 4 and when they, when they first time these things come out, like the Seagate drives, like the Aorus drives, like the Corsair drives, like this is the beginning of them trying new things. And I'm excited to see the innovation that they're going to do, especially because Samsung just took the bar a lot like Nvidia did and said, hey, 5,000, that's awesome Seagate, how about 7,000? And then when RTX IO and all of those, those other things start to take advantage of that tech, it is going to be an incredible time. I'm excited about this. It'll be fun to do some additional testing about this. We'll have links for all this stuff down in the descriptions below. I hope this video was helpful. This is our first, our first time doing this. And really what we thought about is like, what are the questions that we would like to have answered? Which for me, just to kind of overview is, hey, what is it? Why is it special? What's different? What's realistic? And then what is it good for? 
Point being is that I hope you enjoy this and you had a good time. Now, let me know about all of that stuff in the comments below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are, how we can improve, how we can make this better. I really try to break this down in a way that is meaningful and useful to you. I've done enough talking. I've, I've said a whole lot. Now it's your turn. So come down in those comments below. Let me know what, what you thought. Let's have a conversation. I want you guys to know that at the beginning of every video, when a video goes live, I try to spend the entire day just talking and chatting with you. So if you have thoughts, comments, and you're seeing this video for the first time, put them down there. I'd love to know those things. We'll try and address them in a later video later on. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we release cool new videos on absolute new tech, cutting edge, um, you are not gonna get that if you don't hit that notification bell. So if you wanna be in the know, make sure you hit that button. And if you learned something, hit that thumbs up button because that, that makes me feel good inside. Warm, let's measure that with the FLIR right now. How warm am I? Just kidding. Make sure that you follow us on social. We're available on TikTok if it's still up, if you can still download it. We're also available on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, all of those places at Roby Tech, come check us out. And make sure you check out our live show every Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, right here on YouTube, or you can come hang out with us on Twitch as well. L I love the fart sound, by the way. Uh, come hang out with us on Twitch as well, um, if you just want a little bit more of a gamer slam. But those, all those things are happening, and there's some really great stuff that goes during those live shows where we build with new chassis, we build with all new tech, and you can ask questions real time uh, right there with me. Speaking of community, which I just brought up randomly there. I wasn't really speaking about it, but uh, we have an amazing community over on Discord. You can check out the link in the description below for uh, our amazing Discord channel where we answer and look at build questions. We help you with tech support. We talk about cats, we talk about food, we talk about new tech, we talk about all that cool stuff. There's over 4,000 people there now and it continues to grow on a daily basis. Guys, this has been absolutely awesome. I super appreciate you hanging out with me and we will see you guys in the next video.